Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Emily. And I'm Rhea, and in this video we're going to talk about heredity and environment in intelligence. So on today's agenda, we will talk about our learning objectives before discussing what intelligence is and then moving on to the topic at hand. These concepts will lead us to a case study and the implications in the classroom and school setting. By the end of this lesson, we would like you to critically reflect on an achievement of your own. Maybe you got an honor roll, maybe you did not. How did you explain the overall experience? Did you justify your successes and downfalls in terms of your genes, your nature, or was it because of the way that you were raised, the way you were nurtured? Two, we would like to start creating a strategy for how you will modify the classroom environment to promote the full expression of your students' intelligences. So what is intelligence? Take a moment to reflect on what you believe intelligence is. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. So in terms of neurobiology, Stenhouse speaks of four attributes. The first one is sensory and motor equipment, followed by flexible retrieval, generalization and abstraction, which all lead to creative problem solving. In terms of psychology, Spearman believes that the, the mental abilities are hierarchically arranged with the G factor at the apex and specific mental abilities below it. See this diagram. The G factor is significantly influenced by our genes. Intellectual progress, according to Piaget, depends not only on cerebral growth, but also on interaction of the child with the physical and social environment. I greatly appreciate his wake-up call, like, hello, the physical and social environment matter a lot too. As we will see, these aspects have a lot of influence on individuals achieving their intellectual potential. And of course, we cannot speak of intelligence without at least mentioning Gartner, who has identified multiple intelligences. To date, he has proposed nine, which he refers to as modalities of intelligence. So what is intelligence? Despite all these theories, it's still something that we can't define properly. Is intelligence a single factor, or does it have several facets? In scientific circles, the discussion is lively and ongoing. There isn't a widespread common consensus on what is intelligence. It varies depending on discipline and socio-cultural context. And on top of that, certain types of intelligences that are becoming more widespread cannot be measured. So things like creativity, divergent thinking, emotional and social intelligences. But th despite this kind of talk, for the sake of this vlog, we will define intelligence as the ability to solve problems, generate creative ideas, recognize emergent categories and patterns, or simply as processing power or speed of neural conduction. So how does your and environment affect intelligence? Well, different approaches suggest that heredity, aka nature, affects intelligence as follows. Humans have evolved as social beings, and the brain structure itself is related to genetics. The subconscious shapes the id, the ego, and the superego. The genetic blueprint is linked to hormones and neurotransmitters. This can all lead to innate learning methods and features. Some people are predisposed to mental health disorders which can negatively impact their intelligence. Similarly, but differently, environmental factors, aka nurture, Influence intelligence, so things like socialization, cues from the environment that can affect our memory, parents and society who shape the mind. Um, there's also the fact that from conception onwards, the environment affects maturation and development, which are also influenced by the different types of interaction. And once again, intelligence could be stunted by mental health disorders due to the lack of social support, diet, lifestyle, etc. Perhaps. So according to Turkheimer, for those living in harsher environments, it is harder for their good genes to shine through. And ironically in this image, you can see that intelligence is spelled with one L. Disregarding that fact, it's a good image to explain the theory. If fraternal twins who share the same environment but have different DNA have the same level of intelligence, then intelligence must be nurtured by the environment. If the level is different, then it must be genetic. Similarly, if identical twins who share the same DNA but different environments display the same level of intelligence, then it would be natural, aka part of their genetics. In the opposite case, if their intelligence is different, it must be caused by the environment. But now a new question arises. Why not both? Studies show that both nature and nurture influence intelligence. Resnick explored language development of various children. In his adoption studies, he notes that communicative performance is influenced by adoptive parents' behavior, whereas cognitive abilities are influenced by the birth mothers. While the biological father's cognitive abilities should be transmitted to the child, this cannot necessarily be measured due to various reasons. We'll leave it up to your imagination. 
As for Resnick's twin studies, he concluded that identical twins are most likely to make the same mistakes, such as pronunciation, while fraternal twins share more errors than children who are unrelated. This, however, could be the children's influence on each other as they share the same environment. Walston and Gottlieb offer critique. They state that intelligence is about development and not just about the nature-nurture dichotomy. They add that the adoption method cannot separate the effects of heredity and environment because of the long-term importance of a shared prenatal environment. What is more, twins separated at birth shared both prenatal and early postnatal environments. Spector points out that the environment is not limited to what surrounds us externally. It is also our internal microbiome, which consists of a large community of microbes, weighing in at two kilos, which is more than the brain in almost every other human organ, this community consists of 100 trillion microbes. That's a lot of zeros. <laughs> In psychology, there are a variety of approaches that tend to lean towards nature and nurture. This gradient il illustrates the tendencies. In light of these concepts, we can now explore a dramatic case study. So, imagine yourself entering a your classroom. You're a student teacher who wants to practice one of your collaborative learning techniques. As such, you have your students participate in a communicative group activity. One of the groups is comprised of identi identical triplets, two siblings, an adopted child, and a child that has been deprived of socialization and love in their development. Due to this behavior, this child is known as a feral child. As you walk around the class, you notice that the identical triplets are making the same pronunciation mistakes throughout the activity and are only interacting with each other as if they're in their own world. You notice that the siblings are making similar mistakes to each other in their speech and that they are competing for your attention. As for the adopted child, what can you notice in terms of genetics, especially if you don't know that they're adopted? In fact, you might not even notice much. You might only observe similarities in mannerism with the adoptive parents, if you know them. So while you're talking with the group, the feral child walks away and seems completely disinterested in the activity as they are on their own staring out the window. In general, you notice that the child has difficulties cooperating and socializing with other children. Our case study has been pretty extreme in terms of heredity and environment and intelligence. However, we all have experiences that we have attributed to one or the other, perhaps even both. Considering that we cannot change people's genetics or even their home environments, what can we do as teachers to facilitate student learning so they do reach their full potential of intelligence? Well, first, you need to know yourself. How have your genes and your environment affected you? What are your own views on intelligence? Then, you need to know your students. Who are they? What are their needs? What are their abilities and aptitudes? What are some of their habits? Considering the talk about genetics, do they have siblings or even a twin? Although it's probably best if we refrain from comparing students to their siblings, especially in front of them. Now you're just creating, creating a toxic environment. Congratulations. And then, plan ahead. Create a strategy for how you will modify the classroom environment to promote their full intelligence. Remember that it's not just about external environments, like the social, the physical, or the economic. It's also the internal ones, their thoughts, unexpressed emotions, and the microbiome. So we will now leave you with a quote by Gartner, which says, I align myself with almost all researchers in assuming that anything we do is a composite of whatever genetic limitations were given to us by our parents and whatever kinds of environmental opportunities are available. So there's so much information out there on this topic. Please go to our presentation on Google Slides and click on the links from our resource sheets. Thank you. That's all, folks.